Hey guys, this is Stefan. How are you? So I have been requested by many of the LumaPro users to get a more detailed and deep dive set of uh, tutorials on both lighting and the use of LumaPro and basic photography in Second Life. So this is going to be the first of many videos in the series and I've got uh, my lovely business manager and girlfriend Samantha sitting over here ready to go and we're going to explore a little lighting today so we're gonna start by just taking a look at some of the lighting options before I jump into uh, taking photos of Sammy and doesn't she look yummy um, I'm gonna go off and talk about some portrait lighting so um, Let's take a peek at some lighting. Now, um, this is an example of some lighting. I've got a half a dozen photos of lighting. And so what you see on this lighting here is, as you can see, that there's um, a fairly dominant light and a fairly dark side to this thing. It's on a light. And by the way, one of the things um, one of my mentors taught me a long time ago is you can actually, in real life photos, you can actually look in their eyes and you can s it almost documents the lighting. And what you can see is one big light kind of sitting off on one side. Oops. And then when you... I take a look at that, you, you know, it's pretty obvious there's this dominant light on one side of this thing and then another light. This is actually called a split light and we'll talk about that a little bit more. Um, here's another example and what I wanted to show in this particular one is, is again, you can kind of use this to document. There's an accent that's sitting off in here and we'll be talking about accents, so I wanted to at least get that concept down. Um, here's another example of uh, some lighting and uh, you can see there's kind of a, which they're trying to make it look like a room light, but you can definitely see there's a strong accent that's floating around here. All right. Oh, and then uh, last thing on the accents is, is you don't have to just have the accent be the same color. Here's, it's frankly kind of a crazy shot in my mind, but if you notice the accent light is a different gel color and this is one of the things in real life photography is kind of a lot of work. You got to go buy gels and do whatnot in Second Life uh, with LumaPro. This stuff uh, happens pretty easy. Okay, here's um, kind of a flat lighting scheme. Um, you can look at the document in the eyes and you can see there's a light, there's a left light, a right light, and then a top light. And the top light is what's getting all the hair that she's got. And then um, it's a pretty flat lighting. There's a little bit of shadow underneath this thing. Let's look at some other ones. Now, in, if you buy books on portrait photography, sometimes they have different names for them, but they spend a lot of time talking about some of the four basic lighting setups. This first one is called butterfly lighting. And in a butterfly lighting, and, and actually let me jump to another one. The reason why they called it butterfly lighting, as is an example of this, is because it, it casts the shadow on the nose. And some people seem to think this looks like a little butterfly. But the whole idea is it's one, it's one dominant light, and you can see that in her eye right there. And it's, it's high. It's pretty much straight on to her. And it lights her whole face. It does create shadows around her neck and her jawline. And, and again, that, that nose shadow where it gets its name. Here's another example of this. A, definitely a more pronounced version of that where it's often doing this and this particular person in fact their lighting you can even see their accent light here they have this big little light back here and this is to kind of outline a little bit of the hair and whatnot and that's that accent light that we talked about um, here's another example of a butterfly light and it's a little different because her head's turned but uh, it's still pretty dominant on her face the way it's supposed to be um, Rembrandt made a very popular lighting scheme and uh, here's a Rembrandt painting and Rembrandt is a little bit different than the butterfly light because if you notice the light isn't on the center the light is shifted to one side and what this does is it creates a bright spot over here and a darker area over here and he was very famous for this form of lighting in his paintings and this is where the name Rembrandt lighting got picked up. Um, here's an example of Rembrandt lighting. So you can, again, look in her eyes and see it there. There's the the one light is shifted way off to one side and up in the air, and it creates this light over in here. And then clearly, oops, there's a, what happened here? Sorry, I rolled my mouse wheel. And then um, there's an accent light that uh, you can see it catching on her fingers. You can see it catching on her on her hair here. And this is a second light in the shot. And this is allows it. And you can kind of see that second light in her eye down here, kind of reflecting uh, reflecting off of it. Although I actually I don't think that's that light. I think this is just kind of keeping this from becoming utterly dark. Um, and there's another kind of lighting. Um, this kind of lighting is called uh, split lighting. And 
for obvious reasons why it's called Split. Um, you could almost argue this is a almost a split Rembrandt. It's a little high, but it's pretty much lighting half of her and letting the other half go dark. Um, one of the challenges is obviously in split lighting is if this side can go really dark, and sometimes you want that, and sometimes you don't. You want a little accent uh, maybe behind the behind her to do this. Uh, come on, page down. Um, here's another example of a split lighting with an accent where the light is off getting on one side and you can see it capturing a, a, um, a light on another. Um, another example of split lighting without any sort of any sort of um, any sort of accent on that. And frankly this one this one needs a little help for I would argue for a couple reasons unless this is a very specific shot somebody's going for because her face just went completely gone in this and a little bit of light over in here a little ambient light or something would would have certainly helped it. Um, here's the last form of lighting which is called rim lighting and for obvious reasons it's just kind of behind her and just kind of rims out the whole uh, uh, person in here. So Let's go back over to Luma Pro. And by the way, what you see in here is we talked about butterfly lighting, which is the one light centered, the Rembrandt lighting, which is high into one side, the rim lighting, which just captures a little skiff of their background, and then the split lighting, which is the one where it just kind of picks one side or the other. And I've got these kind of as kind of quick setups. So when you start and you want to take a photograph, uh, we need to get some lights to the model. So the way you do that is you just say, give lights, and you specify the person, in this case, Samantha. And uh, a couple things happened. Obviously, the HUD got into some action when we did that. First of all, it changed the name over in here uh, from my name over to Samantha's name. And this is so you know we're controlling Samantha's lights and not somebody else's lights. And I think Steph needs to step back a little bit here to get out of the way here. Um, Samantha needs to wear the lights, please. Um, thank you, Sammy. And when you give a folder, this is what you get here. You get two sets of lights. You get these wearable lights and the projector lights. This this discussion in this video is going to be strictly about the wearable lights. Um, the wearable lights are a little bit like lampshades. They kind of they cast light uniformly in all directions. Um, the projector light is more like a flashlight or a spotlight in a theater sort of setup where it the light is unidirectional, heading one direction, cast shadows and whatnot. So um, there are three of these lights. Um, I gave them designators, red, green, and blue, blue just to help a little bit um, so you can keep them straight. That's not the color that the light emit. It's just, it's just a function, and I've said this in many videos. It's just a matter of so I can keep these things straight and I can decide which one I'm going to talk to. Um, obviously, trying to demonstrate lights in this kind of bright light is not going to be easy, so I'll just go to midnight here just so you can see this. Now, when you first turn on these lights, you're not uh, the lights are not turned on until you hit one of the quick ones. So remember we talked about Rembrandt. This is kind of my favorite. Why don't we start here? And if I just press Rembrandt, what you're going to see is it's actually going to move the lights into the correct position and then it gives it kind of a default lighting just to kind of set it off so you can kind of see what's going on. Um, I am going to pose you, Sammy, so uh, let's see, what do I want to do? I'll just pick one of these things just to pose you. Thank you, just so you can stay still for me here. So again, what you got is three lights and this is, um, I'm going to adjust her eyes. She's got the, uh, there we go talk about lighting in another video here um, or talk about the eyeballs in another video but what you can see is there's this one light and typically the red light I use is my primary light some people in some of the other portrait books call it key lighting and what you can see is it's creating a light it's kind of high into the right sitting over in here um, the green light is typically the second light in the shoot, and it's an accent light. And if you notice in this, in the way the light is set up, the accent light is behind her a little bit. And you can see this green light is projecting this little skiff of light that's sitting over in here. And then finally, there's a blue light over in here, and it's it's kind of just to help light the outfit. Um, do 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 all right so let's play with the balls the sum of red green and blue is white and this little tick mark right here allows you to control all three lights so if i wanted to i could set these lights purple and it would set all the lights purple or i could set them green or i can go back to just press the rembrandt button and it goes to default and it's kind of a default uh, old warming color that we had and then i got this set of 
additional sliders if I'm so inclined. I can sit there and play with the intensity of these lights. Um, saturation has to do with how colorful it is. If you notice, this is getting warmer and warmer. And then as I get over into the saturation on the white, and I try to express this on the HUD here, it's kind of more of a white light. Um, that becomes more dominant when you pick the colors. If I set the saturation way up, the color is pretty dark, and then it's white, and then I can kind of pick how much of that purple I want to put in there. Um, intensity is kind of an obvious one. It's how bright is it? It can be this bright, or it can be not bright at all. And you can kind of decide, you know, how bright how bright you want it to be. Um, radius is how far it falls off. Now, if you guys remember the old face light thing, everybody hated face lights because when you set the radius all the way up, boom, it blasts the entire room full of light. And if I set the radius really tight, it um, it just lights up on her. And if if you actually go up and select this advanced one, you can kind of go look at this and look at when the radius is 0 0.983. That's in meters. So she's about... I don't know, a meter and a half, two meters tall, not maybe not even two meters tall. And so with a, a radius of about 0.9, then really um, it's a matter of um, it's a matter of just how much does the light do you want them to have them kiss on them. All right, let me turn all the lights down for a second. Uh, I'll just go back to the defaults for a second, and I'm going to be on white, and if I set the intensity, it sets all the lights down. Let's play with the single light. Um, so I'm just going to select the red light only. And I can just turn the intensity strictly of this red light on. Um, notice the balls are shiny. And they actually reflect the light. So if you notice, watch, watch as I adjust the intensity of this red light. It actually reflects on the shiny surface of this green ball. You can actually use it. You can see how, the, how, that, how that spot got brighter and brighter or less bright and less bright. And it actually lights the other ball associated with it. Um, there are some other lights floating around the room somewhere. It's probably my face lights that it's picking up over in there. Um, and interestingly enough, if I change the color of the light, you can actually, well, it's kind of hard to see here. But it actually affects the color of the shiny spot as well. It's pretty cool, I think. Okay, so let's go back to, oh, we'll pick like this color here. Let me turn the intensity of this light up. We'll turn the saturation down so it's not too crazy here. And what we have is we just have this single light on her. And this light can um, affect, um, obviously, you can get a pretty nice shot out of this. Um, you guys will probably ask some questions. So how do you take a photograph? Well, you hit hide. And then you can uh, go to the camera menu down in here and click a snapshot. And save it to your inventory, save it to your hard drive, whatever you decide, and then you can bring all this back here um, so you can work on it. Now, um, if we explore this light and move it around a bit, you can get different effects on it. And again, right now, the only light that's lit up is this red light. Now, these balls are attached to another person. This means I can then, um, I don't have to res anything. It can run pretty much in any sim that we want. And the problem is, is though, is you can't right-click and edit the position of these balls on another avatar. So what I came up with, and this is probably the first um, big feature that I added in Luma Pro when I started doing this five or six years ago, was is you can just you can move the ball by clicking it. So if I want to move this ball closer to her, I actually touch here. Now, why am I touching here? Wherever you touch the ball is where the ball's going to go. So if I touch the ball here, it's going to move closer to her face. So you can watch this thing here. Now let me get this kind of in a position where you can see this. Now I can just touch this and you can see how the shadow is affected by where it's at. If I pull the ball away from her, I clicked it multiple times in here, you get a very different effect. Now, if I want to get it closer to her, I actually have to touch the back of the ball. So I actually have to move the camera around and I can get this ball right on her face here. And you end up with some very distinct and sharp shadows. And you can just move these balls around. Um, it is 3D touch, guys. So if you want to, if you want the ball strictly to go straight up in the air, you actually got to be on top of the thing. So when you click it, it goes straight up. And if you want the ball to go down, you actually have to cam underneath the ball and go straight down. I've had a lot of people give me feedback that they'd like another system for that. I'm hearing you. I'm looking at some options. It's just kind of hard to steer things in 3D. This works pretty well. And you can see here that we get some effect on this one ball. Now, next thing we can do is play with color. Um, doesn't have to be this or any particular color. 
Um, let me close down the kind of advanced thing. We have several hundred filters from a company called Lee Corporation. And these filters are filters that are used by the theatrical and uh, uh, portrait lighting community. And anytime you go to a play at a theater, you'll see the colored lights and those little gels are covering the light. And that's from a company called Lee. And so these lights um, um, have different... Uh, uh, different aspects to them. There's a lot, there's probably 50 years of history in picking these colors, why they did, and so rather than having a different set of colors. This just, just gives you some options to start from. Um, and then once you kind of get a color that you like, you can go up into the advanced and make some tweaks to it. So um, obviously we talked about the intensity. We don't have to pick the intensity. We can we can desaturate a little bit. I mean, obviously this is probably too yellow over here. Or this isn't yellow enough. So you can kind of find that place that that pleases your eye um, um, we can obviously tinker with the rgbs directly if we so inclined uh, one of the cool things is is i can actually go up into info and it says these are from lee filters i can actually click the link over in lee filters over in here and it will tell me about this light this is called chrome orange and it has more details of chrome orange than you'd care to know in terms of its color temperature its light transmission capabilities etc pretty cool um, um, I, I kind of like it. And by the way, if I hit the advanced over here, I can look at the more details. Here's the RGB values of this thing. Um, the current intensity is 0.966. We can crank the intensity all the way up if we like. 994, I think it's going to, I can set the radius. We talked about that. I can light the whole room with it, or I can just light her with it. And then I can also then set the falloff. Falloff is not something I know as much about. It's one of the parameters that we have in Second Life, and I've left it available. But what falloff really is dealing with is, is how, once the light leaves the ball, how does it fall off as it progresses out to the radius uh, within there? And a lot of times I just kind of leave the falloff more on this end of the spectrum. I soften it a little bit. It seems to soften the light a little bit. This is, this is definitely a little harsher. But you get the idea. Um, for a second, let's play with the preset for a second. So you've spent some time, you've got the lighting the way you like it, you've worked with it, wouldn't it be great to use it on another model another day? Well, that's kind of what some of the presets are about. And so if I bring out the preset menu by clicking over in here, it brings up the preset menu, and then I can just say, hey, let's save the lighting setup for this thing. So I'm just going to say save the lighting into setup one, and I'm going to hit save. And you can see on Sunday, July 10th at 5.26 p.m., um, it saved the red, green, and blue light position, and I can also save camera pose. We'll talk about this in another video, but for now, I'm just going to at least save this lighting position. So now if I ever go, let's say I go move over to butterfly lighting or something like that back into default, and then I want to restore that, I can just hit restore, and it brings me back to that lighting that we just spent the time working on, which is single lighting. Okay, so let's play for a second now with the accent light. The accent light is the green light. And right now, when you select on the green light, the intensity is set to zero. And let's uh, start cranking up the accent light. Now, if you notice, when I do that, you're kind of seeing the edge over in here. You can see this accent light kick in. We can make this accent light very aggressive in here. Uh, set the radius, I'll set the fall off down at the bottom. And I can play with a different color of the accent doesn't have to be like that one photo that, that I showed you. The accent doesn't have to be the same color. Um, I can sit there and yay, what I want is group notices. Yay. Um, so in either case, um, this gives us the ability to um, look at different um, options for here. Now, I can, move the same, I can move the accent light the same way. I can, I can possibly pull this accent light out a little bit. And I can look at how it's affecting it. I might want to, I notice I'm getting a little bit of purple from this green light on her arm over here. I may not want that. Obviously, I can set the, I can set the radius all the way up on the, just the purple light and light the room. Or I can tighten this light up down here. And notice now that I kind of tightened up the radius. I'm getting the accent on her face, but it's not spilling on her arms. Maybe it's okay to spill on her arms a little. I don't know. We can decide that. And then you can just sit there and, okay, what color seems to please me? 
Um, by the way, there's the rainbow down on the bottom. These are your pure colors, and so I can just pick one of these things, and you can kind of explore with that. But the assumption is, is you just kind of walk through some options and decide what you want to do. Maybe, maybe your scene has a fire in it or something like that, so you need something that kind of shows kind of the glow of the fire off in the corner. You can set that up. You can crank up the saturation on this thing. Or maybe it's a, um, a bright neon light or something like that, and you might want to pick something a little more in the neon range or something like that. It's up to you how you want to go do this. But when it's all said and done, you pick something that seems to catch your fancy. I kind of like that one, actually. And now I can go to this preset, and I'm going to save this into the second preset position and hit Save here. And now we can compare the two lighting here. Um, let me do what I'm going to do is I'm going to hide these balls. In. Um, it's a technical term, but alpha means is it hidden or not. And if I just actually just click this button here or on the alpha, I can, I can make the HUD stay here, but I can just hide the balls. And now let's go compare this. So this, was the, this is the one that we had with that, that, that warm kind of accent light sitting right here. And I can go back and restore just that single light. So you can see the value of the accent light by playing with the save restore. This was the lighting that I had set up before. And then now I want to hit restore on lighting position two. And I can see the value of that accent. Now, if I pull back a little bit, um, it's lit her nicely up here, down here, wasn't as lit. And that's really what the third ball was for. Um, when I built this system, it's kind of down in here to kind of light things up. And I can select the blue light here, and currently its intensity is down low here, and I can just kind of light up the outfit. Again, I can touch the light to move it. And let's go save this into lighting position 3. And now I can go compare lighting position 1. Turn the alpha off again lighting position or lighting one lighting two you can see from lighting one this is where I turn that accent on so it's not as dark in here and that's a personal preference thingy and I can turn a little outfit lighting now I am kinda decided looking at this thing I kind of like the outfit lighting but I don't want the accent as strong so I can take the intensity down of that accent I kinda liked it a little bit darker in there and now I can save this to lighting position 4 if I'm so inclined. And comparing 3. And I find the ability to compare. Notice it lit the hair some more. And when I took off that, you get less lighting on the hair. And sometimes you might really care about the lighting on the hair. Um, one of the tricks I do, by the way, is sometimes I actually use the blue ball to light the room a little bit. And so I'll actually push the radius of this up here, and this allows me to get just a little bit of ambient lighting, especially if I keep this color kind of neutral when I'm doing this. Um, obviously, if you pick some crazy color, you turn the room green or something like that. It may not be what you want, but you can you can extend this lighting up, and I've got the radius set to about six meters or something like that, so it spills out. I can, of course, just keep pushing it and just you know light the whole dang room, turn the intensity up. And this is why people hated face lights, but you know in a controlled environment that could be that could actually be handy. So let me save this into position five, and you can kind of get a sense of. Um, how using that ball light to light the ambient is good. Okay, is there anything that I needed to tell you that I haven't? We've talked about the different lighting types. We've talked about uh, the portrait lighting types. We've talked about the quick presets. You know, again, it's as simple as you give a lights to your model. Make sure the model is selected. Um, I can, there are two people in the room, myself and Stefan. By the way, notice when I changed over to Stefan, all the lighting changed. It actually now is reporting Stefan's balls. Um, yes, I know. Go ahead and give me, go ahead and tease me about it. But um, it can then, um, and then I can go back over to look at what's the status of, uh, of the balls from, uh, um, from Samantha. And, and then I, I can look at what's the status of the red light, what's the status of the green light and what's the status of the blue light. So this gives you a ridiculous amount of control. Um, you obviously can pose the model into different positions. You can decide what you want to go do um, in terms of um, um, taking into the right environment. The fact that this ran without any resing is ridiculously helpful. It gives you an option to go to a bunch of different sims and um, get some great shots. Okay, 
thanks for your time, guys. Talk to you later.